Mr. Allison, my first question is for you. Will you elaborate on your testimony that highlights the harmful precedent that this land exchange will set for the National Historic Preservation Act and how the terms of this land transfer will impact future, future tribal nations? What it does is in, 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 in the 11th hour, in the middle of the night, in a provision that's tucked into uh, FY uh, or an NDAA bill, is it contravenes the, the entire purpose that Congress built into the National Historic Preservation Act. It, 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 uh, it, it does an end around, okay, if you will, the responsibilities that federal agencies have in interacting and engaging and consulting with tribes on the importance of these sites and, and discuss ways to either avoid, mitigate, or, or completely move away from uh, the action that, that is, is taken that, that could damage and impact the site. So if we're not, like I mentioned previously with the chairman's questions, if we're not uh, uh, completely following what, is, what was intended and mandated in the National Historic Preservation Act, and allow it to be waived or moved um, uh, through another at legislative act, there's serious long-term damage to Indian country. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Uh, my next question is for um, Chairman, Mr. Nosey. In November, you informed the Forest Service that you're taking a religious position and assume residence at the Oak Flight Campground in the Tonto National Forest. Will you tell us why you chose to return to your ancestral homeland and why this is important to the San Carlos Apache uh, tribe and, and also the issue that you're fighting for today. The, re the reason uh, returning back to the Oak Flats was growing up and sitting on the reservation with my, my uncles and grandfather and them talking about the promises that the United States made with the Apache people and that one day we'll be able to return back and then telling our people that these places are held in trust and protection that once we become civilized, we'll be able to come back to these places. And so it came to a point where they were hurt, they were crying. There were men that were crying, no longer to be able to go back to what they knew. And I grew up in that era with my mother being a prisoner of war, being born on the reservation. So growing up and becoming a tribal leader and knowing my responsibility as a tribal leader that my responsibility is to protect the people and protect the environment and do the best for what is, could be for good for all. And I have that train, same trust responsibility with the, tri I mean, with the United States, that these are leaders to oversee not just us, but the people of the country. And so when all this was happening and coming to the draft EIS to show the complete ignorance yet to leave us or put us only in three spots and not speak of anything, then I came here to the agency and delivered my letter that I'm returning back to Oak Flats because of their negligence, that I'm no longer going to wait for these promises to happen. I'm no longer going to wait. So I returned back and set up residence and began to take care of the place the way it should be taken care of. And that's where we found many of the things missed in this uh, study that they did. And, and also the nitrogen on the Tonto National Forest because they're more in cooperation with uh, Resolution Copper than with the tribe. And so now I am there to protect and witness what is occurring so that I can explain to the American people if this goes through, what is a death? What is a murder? Because that's actually what's happening to this holy place. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And um, Ms. Uh, Pike, uh, first of all, I. How long have you been advocating, or how long have you been an activist on this issue? I feel like my entire life, um, as indigenous people, our first breath is fighting. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pike, you speak to the importance of Apache culture and how it is an integral part of your identity. Can you talk about the challenges that you faced in your life as an Apache and how your cultural practices have helped you to overcome those. 
I think being here and now is one of the challenges that we face as Apache people, as being indigenous, facing the struggles of fighting for who we are, our language, our land, our resources, our future, and as a woman having to fight to be able to bear a child and to try to teach that child, my future children, of what it is to be Apache and who it is to be indigenous, but to take them to a fence with a crater that's two miles wide, that is something that I'm fighting. It's for our future. And our, like my sunrise ceremony, for the boys to sing and do the sweat at Oak Flat, and for me to be able to pick the acorns and the berries, that is what keeps us who we are. That is the thing, the spiritual connection to Nagosan, to our Mother Earth, to Yosin, the Creator, to Chichib, to Zitlin Chasi'an, and to all sacred sites as indigenous people is what keeps us here today and now as being Apache and as being indigenous. Thank you. And Chairman, with your permission, if I could just have one more moment. First of all, I wanted to um, thank Reverend Barber for being here. You're always um, here to to be a voice for underrepresented people, and I personally appreciate your presence here in this hearing room right now so very much, so thank you for coming. Um, I also want to just mention that uh, one of our colleagues, uh, they sent a message saying that uh, we should cancel this hearing uh, because uh, essentially the other side wasn't represented. But I just have to say that I'm sorry I wasn't here when this bill was finagled into the NDAA. I'm sorry that I didn't have a voice in Congress when uh, it was important. And I have to say that when they do things like that, Native people, they're not heard either. That side is never heard. And so uh, I think that if, uh, if, you know, if your organization, Apache Stronghold, would have had you know, a couple million dollars in the bank, you could have hired some lobbyists to come out here and lobby every single Congress member to say, please don't vote for this. Please make sure that stays out of the NDAA because this, effect, this will affect the future of our tribe. Um, that perhaps we wouldn't even be having this hearing right now. So I want to say that uh, regardless of what happens, we all have an obligation to stand up for underrepresented people. And definitely for Native American sacred sites that are just bulldozed, blasted. I mean, it's happening across the country. I, I feel like this is a repeat of a hearing we had just a couple weeks ago when sacred sites were being destroyed. So I want to just uh, mention that and uh, know that uh, I feel like Native folks and their sacred sites, they have waited long enough. And uh, this hearing is proper today. Uh, and thank you for showing up. Thank you for coming all the way out here to defend your land and to talk about what's important to you because your voice has never been heard enough. And Chairman, I yield.